I'd like to talk about Turkey. What's going on? Last year we had a coup attempt, and a few years before that you had these protests at Gezi Park, which turned into an ordeal. Four protesters were killed, and uh, and that started off this uh, attack from the the government of Turkey, the, the ruling party, the AK Party, uh, attacking this group related to Fatullah Gulen, who is a a preacher of sorts that lives in he's lived in Pennsylvania for years now. And what happened is, uh, just about the time around after the Gezi Park uh, protests or riots, whatever, uh, the uh, Gulen said because four protesters were killed in these, uh, um, they were killed. Four protesters were killed by police, and the police were largely known to have been. Uh, many police were known to have been, you know, members of the uh, Gulen group or Gulen movement. Uh, so. After this, after four people were killed in, in quelling these uh, riots or protests or whatever you want to call them, uh, Gulen issued a statement saying that this is excessive use of force. And this really pissed off Erdogan to no end, who was the prime minister at the time. And it's, uh, you know, since from that point on, or you know, even before then, uh, you just had this uh, hatred directed towards the Gulen movement, saying that they're anti Erdogan and they're anti Ak Party. And, uh, and about the same time, you see, you had the the previous secular, uh, you had you had the secular government in Turkey used to have power, and so the AK Party, Erdogan's party, together with Gulen people and all kinds of people in Turkey, but the Gulen people helped them. They uh, they were able to to uh, get get Erdogan in his position, you know, make sure the army didn't come in and uh, and uh, take him out of power, and uh, so they supported each other. And then Erdogan got his power, and it seems like he didn't like the idea that who is this group of people? They have a newspaper; it's the best English newspaper in Turkey, and they have you know Zaman. It was a great, or I don't know, great. It was a, it was a paper, and a good news source of sorts in Turkey. They had all the, uh, all the best private schools, the high schools, middle schools, uh, study centers. Uh, they were related to this Gulen movement. So there were private uh, private schools that uh, people of all uh, uh, there there were often the best schools in the area. So it didn't matter where you, you know the people were religious or whatnot, but generally conservative people wanted conservative Muslims, whether they be part of the Gulen group or not. These they would send their kids to the Gulen schools, knowing that they trusted these people and that they're going to take good care of their kids, and and they also. I mean, I can testify they they taught English better than a lot of the other schools in Turkey. I uh, I taught a summer school for kids of this uh, from one of these groups, this Fatih College, and uh, yeah, they learned English well in these schools, or better than uh, elsewhere. Anyway, so they had an effective system of they had the newspapers, they had the uh, they had the schools, and also their people were uh, so you had Gulen people. In the police and in other areas of Turkey. So, but what that would mean is, if you're a, uh, if you're with the Gulen group, you would, you know, men or you know, men would live together in a house with other men in the group, and you take turns. Somebody will cook today, and somebody else will cook tomorrow, and then somebody will do shopping. And you know, they have these move, they have these kind of houses all over the world. So, students at uh, Harvard and MIT, they would uh, live together and uh, kind of support each other. And it's funny, you know, you people that didn't like this group, they didn't like Fethullah Gulen or whatever, but they were conservative Muslims, they would still send their kids to uh, to live with them or to uh, knowing that they could trust these guys, that they're going to take care of their kids. Also, they had a charity organization, uh, Kim Sayokmu, uh, and they would, uh, people trusted them. I, I, I went on a trip out east in Turkey and some friend, a friend of mine, he wanted to uh, give money for a, to kill a lamb you know, to slaughter a lamb for the poor people in the area. And the, the friend, the Turkish friend of ours who was taking this around, he said, oh no, don't do that. Uh, I, I just give your money to this, this group. Uh, you can trust them. And so people, people trusted this group, even if they weren't part of it, they trusted them for uh, their charity money and, and they trusted sending their kids there. Um, and also the uh, college or Students from this uh, from this group, they would help. Like college students would help tutor, uh, you know, younger kids. 
to help them prepare for their exams so they could kind of get ahead. And some, so uh, a lot of people, they, they, they met the Gulen group through getting free tutoring, which helped them get into college and then go on to their careers. And then they had nothing to do with the Gulen movement. But also, so, so the Gulen movement was in the police and that was known. And, and so uh, power was taken from the, uh, in the kind of struggle for the Ak party to get power when uh, from the uh, former, the formerly the secular people had power. So they said, no women, you know, women can't wear headscarves in anywhere, uh, uh, any government places, or, you know, you can't go to school and wear a headscarf. You can't go to college. So when I first arrived in Turkey and I was teaching, um, the girls, when they would show up to school, they would, if they were religious and they wore the headscarf, they would take their scarves off before they went onto the campus. And then when they left the campus, they would put them back on. And this was part of the kind of secular oppression that, that uh, the former you know, regime uh, had on Turkey. And so, uh, right, so then the government, the religious government had more and more power. They were able to overturn this law. Now, you know, women can wear the scarf or not wear the scarf when they go to school. And, uh, and that's, that's good. I mean, freedom's good. Uh, freedom of religion, freedom of uh, practice. So, what happened here? Uh, yes, the secular people, they had power. And so the Gulen people who were in the police and they were also in doing investigations into corruption and that kind of thing, they helped take down some of the kind of uh, secular people that had power and were blocking attempts from the Ak party to do things like get rid of the headscarf and that kind of, you know, get rid of the headscarf ban and that kind of thing. So the, the Gulen people and their investigations and corruption and all that, they brought down a lot of these former formerly uh, this Ergenokan group or these, these, the secular people that had power before the, uh, the Ak Party took control. So they helped to take all these all down, all these corrupt people, and the Ak Party was thankful. They were happy. Hey, uh, so an Ak Party supporter friend of mine is like, hey, they used to be after us, and now we put these guys in prison. Ha ha. So he's all happy about that. But then these guys, in their investigations, they happened to find a bunch of corruption uh, with Ak Party people. And so what are you supposed to do? They, they, uh, so they came forward and they, they brought these uh, charges out. They had evidence and they brought this. Uh, they said, yes, these Ak Party officials did this or that. It's corruption, blah, blah, blah. And so they did their job. They investigated, they found corruption, and they turned the guys in. So it's funny. No Ak Party supporter will say that, will deny that there was corruption. They won't deny that there's, there were uh, corrupt Ak Party officials and that the Gulen people didn't make stuff up, but they found real corruption. Nobody denies that they found real corruption. What they, what they say is that, oh, well, that's why are you selectively enforcing uh, against us this corruption? That's not fair. There's corruption everywhere. So that's a really bullshit excuse. I mean, you can't, you can't use that excuse. Uh, it's like, yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're dirty, but so is everybody else. So why are you coming after us? Well, I don't know. That's, uh, so then the, you know what so the Gulen people they, they have journalists they had uh, all these they reported on this kind of thing and that that really hurt uh, that must have really pissed off Erdogan and really uh, you know uh, yeah really frustrated him and so there was this all-out attack and then the Gezi Park thing and Gulen said hey the police are using excessive force blah 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 and then Erdogan says oh well, this is a shadow government and Gulen is trying to take control of all this when really that's uh, I don't know I don't buy that you can all make up your own, have your own uh, conclusions on all that stuff. But so then what happens? The Gulen people, uh, they have, you know, they had a bank, Bank Asya. They had the best high schools all across Turkey and the, you know, tutoring centers and all that stuff. And uh, so Erdogan and the Ak Party, they just, they just uh, attack them one step after another. They close down their, their uh, uh, tutoring centers because Turkey is based on these stupid standardized tests. So uh, the only way to get ahead is to send your kids to these tutoring extra classes and they learn how to uh, you know, pass these exams. So the, the most, the biggest uh, uh, group, you know, the biggest one were these Gulen people. They, so they closed these schools and then they had a bookstore and they closed the bookstore and they closed the high schools. And then what happens in this place? Instead of these private schools that everyone w sent their kids to, um, then Erdogan, he starts building up these Imam Hatip schools, like these, uh, these schools that are, that are more religious. Uh, they teach you everything 
that a regular school does, but then they add the religious element to it. So, uh, whereas the Gulen group, they skirted the secular authority and were able to kind of have re religiously minded people teach in these schools, but they didn't do anything openly religious. So like they would have uh, an Ataturk picture hanging on every wall above the chalkboard. They were, they were perfectly good secular Turks in appearance, but at the same time, they, their plan or their, their method was to, hey, let's be good Muslims and, and they'll learn through our example. And the children, uh, you know, we don't have to like preach Islam. We can we can get them good at science, and we can make send our students off to win the the uh, math Olympiads and science Olympiads all around the world. And also, what is amazing is they brought students. They they have these schools all around the world. So when you're in Turkey, uh, you'll see kids from Cambodia, you know, all these African countries, all around the world. They, they bring all these international students to Turkey, and they show them. Uh, and then these kids end up learning Turkish and uh, then there's these connections formed with Turkey and And then they they also ran these uh, these things called the Turkish Olympiads Where they'd have you know international students sing Turkish songs or read Turkish poetry and uh, Erdogan would would join the uh, you know, He would join these events and, and everyone was so proud of Turkey to do this stuff, but Okay, so then Erdogan and the AK party they closed everything uh they shut down, they took people's money from the bank, you know, Bank Asya, they, they, didn't, they didn't let people take their money from the bank, and then they, they just confiscated everything. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, so, and what, what are they, so it's just crazy. These, these guys, these are supposedly good Muslims or re, religious Muslims, and what do they do? They close everyone's, they close these schools, they close the, the paper, they imprison journalists who are in this rival group, it's not even a rival group. It's just it's a private organ. You know, it's people that are somehow affiliated with Gulen, but in, in no official way, and they're uh, uh, like-minded or whatnot. And so they had their schools. They had everything. Uh, right. So this this video is aimed at basically people that can speak English and understand uh, understand me. Maybe. Uh, so Muslims in America that they look at Turkey and they think, oh, well, that's great. You know, Muslims have power in Turkey and they, they, they now women can wear the headscarves and they're working for Muslim freedom and whatnot. When that's not really the case, this is just a case of uh, this has happened all throughout his, history in Turkey where one group uh, just takes power somehow and then they attack another group. Uh, they blame all the problems on. So now the weather's bad in Turkey today, and it must be Fet uh, FETO, you know, the, the Fetullah Gulen terrorist organization. It's their fault for everything wrong in Turkey. So it's just a scapegoat. And it's just like uh, in 1984 when you have everybody stare at the picture of, uh, I think it's Goldstein, and everyone just stares at the picture and hates him and screams. It's just a time of hatred. So they just put this face, this Gulen guy, all the problems, you can just, they're all his fault. Oh, so, but the strange thing to me, so when I, I, I uh, became Muslim in 2001, I was in school at Indiana University, and that's, that's where I first met uh, all these uh, people from around the world, all these Muslims from around the world, and uh, I became uh, good friends with many Turks, and I spent a lot of time with them, and to me, it made, it made no difference. I don't know, you're part of this group or that group, whatever. But I would hang out with these guys, and a lot of the Gulen-minded people, you know, all the Turks would hang out with them because all the religious Turks, right? They had that in common. So even if they weren't part of the Gulen movement or whatever, they would still associate and they'd have picnics together and all that stuff. And now, uh, in Turkey, you have people like if you have a Gulen book, your neighbors will, uh, they can report you, and then the people might show up and arrest you and put you in prison, and who knows how long you'll be there. Uh, they kicked 40,000 real criminals uh, out of prisons in Turkey to make room for 40,000 uh, uh, Gulen people. Uh, and also there's just news recently, uh, Interpol no longer takes Turkey seriously. Like when they say these people are criminals, they don't believe them because they just put, a they gave them a list of 60,000 Gulen people who they say are criminals and should be arrested. So Gulen is still in Pennsylvania. Uh, Obama didn't extradite them. I don't, doesn't look like Trump's going to extradite him to Turkey. Uh, so I don't know. Does that is that a sign of guilt or innocence that the, the America is supporting him? Uh, I don't know. But uh, 
So it's just a real shame. It, it seems like I, mean, I don't know why why this is uh, Turkey's just falling apart, and uh, you know I have I have all these friends, and I, I don't know. It's like hmm, uh, who's sending people to prison? Who's in prison? Who's actually done anything wrong? Because Gulen doesn't claim to know anything about this supposed coup. None of his followers claim to know anything about it. And all they do is they have these news stories like, oh, Gulen people, how did it help people cheat on their tests? Well, it's funny, I'm not going to give any names or personal stuff, but I know lots of like, uh, you know, I know, I know, uh, I have an Ak Party friend I was close with. I know he cheated to get to, uh, to get his degree from IU, which is kind of funny. Um, so it's funny that, you know, I mean, in Turkey, everybody cheats. It's no big deal. But that was, a, that was like the first time I realized that. It's like, oh, wow, this is Turkish. This is kind of a mentality in Turkey. It's okay to cheat if it gets you what you want. And so that was an Ak Party friend of mine who uh, went on to, like, have a high position in the Ak Party. Just kind of funny. But uh, it's just a real shame. The uh, Most of the people that supported Gulen, they, they read his books. I never really liked them myself. Uh, I found them to be kind of uh, corny. And I find I have found Gulen followers to be kind of like uh, kind of like Mormons, which I always I just love Mormons. You see them on the street; they're always smiling. They got their name tags, and they smile, and they you know they're nice to you and everything. But then they just you know, if you don't want to talk to them about the Book of Mormon, they don't really want to talk to you. But the Gulen people aren't like that. But uh, there is a kind of weird vibe that I used to get when I was at uh, at the Gulen places in Turkey. I, I worked at their university which is now closed along with their other universities and their high schools and other schools. But I, uh, I found them to be gen you know, generally you know, honest people or more honest people <laughs> and uh, um, kind of people I would trust uh, you know, to send my kids to let them, you know, I mean, like if I had children, I would send them to their schools because they teach better English or whatever. But now in Turkey, these, these people are just scapegoats. This whole organization, you know, Erdogan says uh, Gulen did this, Gulen does that, and his, his people just buy it up. They want to bring back the death penalty so they can kill him and his followers. And now there's lots of Gulen followers in prison who have done nothing. They're just generally good-hearted people. They're in prison now. They've been in prison for a year, some of them. Um, you know, there's uh, what happens in these prisons, probably just like, uh, you know, American prisons like Guantanamo, probably a lot of uh, uh, torture and rape and that kind of thing. But not to say that that's happening everywhere, because Turkish people, it's like, you know, they can be bad, they can be good. And uh, so I'm, I'm hoping that a lot of these people that are unjustly imprisoned are not not uh, suffering. So uh, there's some thoughts. I can't really put this together too well. Uh, I've just I've been thinking about this for a long time, and so here's something. Here's a here's a source. Uh, uh, you heard it from me. So, um, if you got any questions, I'm I'm open to talk, and just send me an email or a message. Peace, everybody.